Hello everyone. Let's get started with this particular training session, which is on HANA modeling overview. Okay, let me connect to the HANA system right now. Okay, so let me connect to the system. Okay, we are in the HANA studio right now. So let me connect to the HANA studio. Okay, this is an app that is used to connect to SAP HANA database. So we are in the modeler perspective. This is the modeler perspective through which we create the different models. We create the packages. We create the data provisioning and we build the models. We do the deployment. We do the data preview. So these are the four different features which are available in HANA modeler. Okay, so the moment we connect to HANA Studio, we get into a quick launch pad. Okay, in this particular quick launch pad, you can see this is where the different features, the new features which are there, like how to create a package, how to create an attribute view, how to create an analytic view, how to create a calculation view. Okay, then how to create an analytic privilege, how to create the procedures. Okay, if you scroll down, you can see the setup that is how we can do the different setups. That is, say for example, if you want to manage the preferences, how you can manage your preferences, how you can configure your import server, how you can define the delivery units, so you can create the schema mapping. So most of it is used in the data services. Okay, then here, this is basically a data preview. Here you can generate time dependency data. You can do a data provisioning. So this is most of it is using SLT. Okay, at the top on the right side, you can see you can activate, you can redeploy it, you can do a mass copy, do export, import, migrate, and auto documentation as well. Okay, so these are the different things which is available in the quick launch view which will help to do the modeling in an easier way. Okay, so on the left side here, you can see the different HANA systems which are connected. You can connect to multiple HANA systems if you want. Okay, depending on how many systems you have in your landscape, you can connect all your systems to the landscape and can manage it from here. So let me expand this particular HANA systems. Here you can see there are two different things. One is the catalog. Another is the content. In the catalog, you can see the different database objects. So these are the database objects which are there in the catalog. Okay. In the content, you will find the different packages which is created. Okay. So in the con catalog, you will see the different authorization object like users, roles. You have public synonyms. Okay. Then you have the different users which are created, then some of the key users like sys underscore bi, sys underscore bic, sys underscore wrapper, sys underscore statistics. So these are the different key schemas which is present here. Okay, schema is basically a entire different component where you can group all your database objects in one compartment. Okay, then in the content you have different packages created and within the packages you have different type of views like you have things like you have attribute view you have analytic view you have calculation view you have analytic privilege so these are the things which can be created within the package okay so we just saw what are the different things available in the information perspective so this view that we are seeing is the information perspective Okay, so let's see the synchronization using SLT controller. So how you can use the SLT controller, what is basically an SLT controller. So let me click on the data provisioning tab here. Okay, on the data provisioning tab here, you can see the source system which is sending the data to SAP HANA. Here you can see which schema, which system, is connected to this particular HANA database. Okay, at the bottom you can see which are the schemas which is getting replicated. In the schema, which table is getting replicated? What is the status of this particular replication? When this replication started? And if you want to load a particular table, 
if you want to replicate a particular table you want to suspend the replication you can stop the replication you can resume the replication from this interface if you click on load okay on clicking the load what you will see is you will see the list of the tables okay these are the tables which are there in this particular schema so you can select which tables you want to replicate say for example the tables which are not getting replicated you can just select them click on add and you can start the replication okay in this case I have already replicated these tables so I won't do that again so basically this is the interface where you can define all these things okay so let's get into the next thing is basically what else you can do using this particular tool is you can define a new replication you can select the system over here that is what is the source system you want to do so here you can select your source system you can see that this is the different source system where you are replicating the data okay you can change your source system from here this is basically a central tool from which you can manage your replication okay there is a filter over here you can select which table you want to see okay say for example i want to see vback table okay it shows the status of that particular table for the replication so that's all in the this particular replication scenarios okay now let's focus on building the models so there are three different types of models which are available that is attribute view so let me go to the attribute view here you can see this is the attribute view that we have okay in this particular attribute view there are different attribute views that we have created okay so how to create an attribute view what is an attribute view basically they are the master data models or the dimension tables in the legacy bw that you might have seen so these are basically the master data views okay so next is let's go to the analytic view analytic views are the fact tables and the dimension tables. so let me click on this particular analytic view okay here you can see there are different columns which are connected this is the data foundation view where you can see all the tables that is part of this particular analytic view and in the logical view you can see how this data foundation is connected to the dimension tables okay, then in the next tab here is the calculation view where you can see how do you create a calculation view what is a calculation view basically you can do your complex calculations defined over here okay so that is on the calculation view then is on the analytic privilege you can define the analytic privilege basically these are the privilege which controls access to the analytic views okay so let's get into the details of creating an analytic uh, to start with we'll get into the attribute view so let me create an attribute view or let me show you an attribute view so let's close all this stuff that we have opened right now here you can see these are the two attribute views that I have created so one is the material and another is G act underscore info okay in this you can see there are two tables and you can see this is table sk1 and this is skt okay so here you can see there is a join created between the these two columns over here okay and here it's a pretty simple attribute view where there is just two joins which is created and rest all are attribute view you can have a calculated attributes you can have an hierarchical attributes over here okay so that's what is a sneak preview on attribute view okay let's get into the analytic view let's select any one of the analytic views say let me select this sales demo as the analytic view okay in the analytic view here you will see two tabs one is the data foundation tab where you have your fact table which is created okay you have selected the fact table these are the fields of the fact tables okay and here you can see this is the primary key okay here these are the attributes that is you are seeing in the output okay here you can see vbeln then you have rnam okay then on the logical view you will see all the dimension tables which is attached to this table 
okay so here you have this is the logical view here you can have all the dimension tables as well okay so let's see how it looks like so these are the two views that is there here you can see data foundation view the logical view in this particular attribute analytic view then let's see here this is another analytic view this is your data foundation okay then let's see this particular analytic view okay here you can see this is the data foundation view okay here these are the two tables which is there and in the logical view what i wanted to show you is the different dimension tables so here you can see these are the other dimension tables to which this particular fact table the data foundation is attached okay you have the joins created you can have different types of joins you can have say inner joint or outer joint okay say for example if i double click on this particular join it will show you what type of join it is okay the features of the join okay here you can see this is a left outer joint okay and these are the left side and the right side attributes and this is showing the progress or history of the this particular analytic view creation okay so basically this is like your uh, fact view and the dimension views so that is all in the attribute view then for the complicated things you can create a calculation view in the calculation view say for example if i want to create a new calculation view okay so before that let me close all these different views that we had selected okay i don't want to save anything at this moment okay so let me close them okay now let me create an analytic view so before that let me show you this particular analytic view that is here okay here you can see that on the left side of the canvas what you can see is so on the left side you have the scenario which is created on the right side you can see this is the canvas on which you can select what you want to see in your output what are the calculation what are the measures you want to add in your output window and at the top you can see whether you want to create a union or join or projection or aggregate so these are the things which can be used to create a scenario okay now in this particular case i have used this attribute view g sales underscore demo so g sales underscore demo so using this i have selected this particular table just drag this table over here and here i am doing an aggregate so let me see this so this is the table that that we have selected okay and okay this is the table then let's click on the aggregate so we have done the aggregate on these values then the output so in the output i want to see only these things so i have just selected these things in the output and created a join okay so this is what is there already so let me select a sec create a sample calculation view just to show you guys how the calculation view looks like so basically this is a a sample calculation view okay so i've just selected the same name and there are two different types of calculation view graphical view or an sql script view graphical views is basically for the simple calculation views but you can select a sql script as well sql script is basically you want to do some complex calculation views you can go for the sql scripting okay then schema i want to use this particular schema so let me go to the next tab here you can see that you can select from the catalog the objects can be selected basically you can select the tables from here okay then you can select the packages or you can select the different attribute or analytic views out of it and you can just click on finish 
okay so this is one way of creating it so in this case say for example I don't want to select anything I'll just click on finish okay here you can see this is an output window okay he, in this here you can see union join projection aggregate so these are the different tools palette which is there so you can create scenarios based on this okay now what I want is I want to create okay here I don't want to create this projection at this moment okay so let me cancel this okay so I want to drag this particular attribute this view I have dragged that is sales underscore demo and what I am going to do is I want to create a union or say for example I want to create let's create an aggregate okay now I have selected an aggregate let me join this particular aggregate okay so I have joined this aggregate so let's see what are the fields we require from this aggregate say as an aggregate column so let me add these columns as the aggregate columns okay so something if I want to add it in the output column I can add it there okay then I can select join this attribute to the output column okay and in the output I am looking for only these things okay so let's select this as an attribute this as a measure this as a attribute and this as a measure okay so that's how I have created this particular calculation view Okay, so this is where you can calculate your calculation view and let's go to the next topic that is creation of analytic privilege so let me I can save this particular view I can validate the view and then activate this particular view okay so let's validate this particular calculation view okay validation is successful let's activate this particular view it's telling me to deploy it okay so I have redeployed this the information calculation view has been successfully deployed okay now let's do a data preview okay so let me go to this particular calculation view okay and we will see the data preview there So let me click on the data preview here you can see on the data preview tab these are the different this is the output of the query that we just did that is calculation view okay on the distinct values you can see that these are the different distinct values that is there okay here you can see the simple charts being displayed there and if you want to do an analysis here you can see that you can do an analysis say for example on the label side this and on the value side you have this particular figures okay so the analysis can be done as well okay and this analysis you can see it in different formats say for example in pie chart in line chart in this particular graph format in other graph format say in grid format or in the HTML report format in chart format Okay, so different chart formats like line chart and other charts can be displayed as well okay so that is on the calculation view that I wanted to talk about let's go to the analytic privilege okay in the analytic privilege what we do is we define the controls basically on the controls on the calculation view or the analytic view okay so we define the controls there once the controls are defined say for example here let's say let me try to sh show you the creation of an analytic privilege okay let's create one analytic privilege say let's create a sample one okay let me select next okay sample it's already exists so let me name it as sample one okay let's select next okay here we can select the information models that we want 
okay so I am interested in putting the controls on this particular sales test table so let me select this particular analytic privilege okay so this is what I want to select and if I want to put a filter on this say I can select the filter on a particular field there okay so the filter can be set on the field and say for example if I want to add this particular thing so that I can query the filter on that particular thing and if I want to put further restriction that can be set as well that is what is the value that I am interested in okay so here we can say less than or equal to or in between or greater than so any filter can be these are the different filters that can be defined to put the restraint constraint on okay so that is on the analytic view creation in this okay so basically these are the things that I wanted to cover in this particular training video thanks everyone thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye